I would firstly like to show you this picture that I've got up here that I did with uh, texture paste and uh, gesso. I, I particularly like to get textures. What you could use texture paste for is to, um, you know, to build up textures like dry stone walls to get unusual effects in watercolour by applying the actual texture paste to the paper. I built up all of the stonework with the gesso. If I rubbed there, you can hear how gritty that uh, is. I didn't grit or put anything on the actual lizard, but uh, I did round this area here. Gesso is a primer generally used for putting onto canvases. Say that you've uh, got a failed picture, you can actually gesso over the top of it and repaint the canvas or the paper. It's also very useful if you were to paint it onto a piece of the cartridge paper. The bite from the pencil is amazing. You get a really strong tooth with it. And so it's nice for drawing on top of, as well as building up these textures. So I'll rub off the masking fluid. I've got a, a product called a mask away rubber. And I'm just going to, better to rub it off with this than it is with your finger. <laughs> and you'll see the masking fluid effects coming out there. So you can build up some really interesting textures in watercolour. So, And I did put a little bit of um, cling film on this gives you very nice textures. Um, I don't think that the paint was probably thick enough. You crumble it up and put it onto the wet paint like that, and you must leave it to dry. So particularly useful, these, these sort of mark making. If you were doing flower paintings and anything like that you wanted a texture on, it saves you having to uh, think of things to paint. I'll just have to reach around and show you some mark making that goes into here. Now, when I put watercolour over the top of this, it will, you can put some trees in. And to here. The oil pastel in watercolours is very useful. So if I just put a little bit of uh, blue up there, you'll see that um, you'll see that the doesn't affect the oil pastel at all. It will just sit there. You want some nice thick sort of uh, trees coming across there. You can start to put trees across the top and make it into a, a little. A little painting. So I'm using Sennelier oil pastels tonight and they're lovely and creamy and they're beautiful to work with. You could use um, chalk pastels over the top but you'd have to be careful when you wa if you were wanting to watercolour over the top of it uh, that the it's pure pigment in a stick. So what you are creating is a paint. I just want to show you about how to put masking fluid on. When you put it on, you've got to rinse your brush out first, dip it into the masking fluid and put it onto the paper. Never, ever be in the habit of just dipping it in the bottle and putting it on like this. Because what happens is you end up with a brush covered in paint, in masking fluid, and it'll be ruined. So if you keep rinsing it out in between each application, your brush will stay fine. What masking fluid is used for generally, in the case of these flowers here, is to reserve the white of the paper. So you can paint over it. So you put the paint, the, the masking fluid on, and then you must leave it to dry. 
And once dry, you can paint over the top of it. And then when the watercolour is dry, you can then remove the masking fluid. But you can't put it on wet paint and you can't put it, take it off when it's wet. It must, must be dry. But you can use masking fluid um, for, on colour as well. So if you want to reserve some of this colour here, you can put masking fluid onto that and you can just put a little bit of masking fluid up there. When I, that's dried, I can paint over the top of it and it will reserve that blue there. This racehorse picture that I've done, it was three pourings, so I'd, I'll start from the beginning. Pouring exercises, I've got three tubs of colour and the primary colours, red, yellow and blue. And once mixed up, uh, the paint drawing was done, I masked out the lightest whites on the picture and did the first pouring. So there was a lot of masking fluid went on in the first instant. And then when that pouring was done and it was left dry, I did the second masking out on top of the masking out I'd already done and then let that dry and then did another pouring. So there was three pourings and three masking outs to do on this picture and that before we rub it all off. And it's quite a good reveal because you don't know how it's going to turn out till you take all the masking fluid off. Sometimes when you take it all off, some modifications have to be titivated up, but, uh, you know, it's a good uh, thing to do. And But the point I was getting across is you just don't have to use masking fluid to reserve whites. It will go over the top of other colours to reserve those colours. You've got to put on the masking fluid as if it was paint, that you were putting paint onto the paper. Don't be, I've seen people apply it with a gung-ho effect of, oh, one a bit there and one a bit there. The trouble is, is when you rub it off, you're left with, with some unsightly marks in the picture. So you've got to think of it as paint. This is another picture I've done with uh, Gesso. I put some gesso onto this one, but there was a lot of masking out done onto this particular picture. I went round the horns and I did all this um, bit of fur round here with it and a little bit down here. I did quite a bit down there, actually, but not the sheep's head. It was too big an area and it didn't need it because I could paint round that, but I did do the horns took the horns. I do use a lot of pen in my paintings. You can see the pen marks in it. This one here, the turtle. I tried washing up liquid in this one. <laughs> so the turtle was just painted normally. And in the background, I uh, mixed some washing up liquid in uh, a pot and then mixed up the blue paint wet the paper and did a wet into wet, uh, but very bubbly <laughs> to get the effect of the water on there. This was a little bit of fun. It's not meant to be anything in particular, but it does look like a tree. <laughs> this was done with acrylic paint, acrylic uh, inks. And in this, I used a little bit of gum arabic can you see the shine in that particular bit of the picture there? So when the, whilst the acrylic ink was on, which is very much like you use it like a watercolour, while it was on, I put some of the gum arabic in it and it did slow down the drying time. So it was just out of a bottle of um, this gum arabic and I poured it into the acrylic ink, which you could do in watercolour. I could have done this in watercolour, but I just thought I'd use my inks for this. And uh, it was fun to do because I could then scratch into it to create this sort of tree effect. And I intend to do a lot more of these to tear up and put into my collages because if you look at it that way, 
you know, you could have a river bank. It would be very hard to paint that in situ. I use a multitude of paint papers in my work. For this one was done on a, what I would say was done on a smooth paper, like a hot press paper, this one. This one was done on uh, Bockingford paper and a heavyweight paper at that. That was 600 grams, 300 pounds. It's quite a thick card type of paper. But Bockingford paper is a very forgiving paper. So if you need to lift out watercolours, Bockingford is great. Because it's a wood pulp paper, you can lift watercolour off a wood pulp paper far easier than you would on a cotton rag paper such as Saunders Waterford, which I particularly like for watercolours. It generally takes about five minutes or two minutes for it to dry, depending on how thickly you put it on. Don't put it on too thick. Another point I mentioned is that it doesn't last forever, masking fluid. You know, if you had it for years, it would probably be no good. If it's gone all lumpy and uh, sort of uh, going on very thickly, it will tear the paper if you're not very careful. If you're not careful, if you do accidentally buy the one that's invisible and you can't see where you've put it, what I'd recommend and what we do in class is put a little bit of tube paint into the bottle, just a little bit, and give it a shake. And then it will colour it so you can see where you've put it. But be careful with hair dryers on masking fluid. Uh, if you're going to dry it with the hair dryer, keep it on fairly a distance from the paper because it can bake onto the paper. It can be very unpredictable masking fluid, um, especially, as I say, if it's getting old and you've put it on quite thickly and then you go and dry it with the hair dryer you find that it might just tear the paper. In the subject of the pouring one, we can't use a hairdryer because we're doing so many levels of masking. It's got to be done left naturally. So generally, I'm doing that uh, pouring exercise over a day in a residential course, uh, and we usually paint a picture in between that, which doesn't involve pouring just to fill in the time, because otherwise we get very frustrated at waiting for things to dry. Uh, another point with masking fluid, if you've done a nice detailed drawing, you know, uh, spend hours on the drawing, then you put masking fluid over the top. When you rub it off, it'll take the drawing with it. So watch <laughs> that one. Watch that one. 